Hello everyone, this is Michael and welcome to Practical CSGO channel. In this video we'll be talking about top 5 self-improvement tips for in-game leaders. Nowadays, as the game becomes more and more complex, having a good IGL is a top priority for many teams. Because of that, each in-game leader should seriously work on his craft as much as possible not only to achieve greater results with his team, but also to increase his own value on the marketplace. Let me skip all the basic stuff that was already covered in numerous tutorials on YouTube. Here I will focus on practical tips that you will be able to implement right after watching this video. Let's begin. Tip number one. Work on your communication skills and self-confidence. Players do not like to be led by weak, indecisive leaders. It greatly damages their self-confidence and motivation to win. In tough matches where a team is losing round after round, IGL's confidence must be heard in the calls that he makes as well as in the tone of his voice. You want to improve in that field and understand basic communication rules? If so, I would advise you to read some great books on leadership. Yes, you heard me right. Same laws apply when leading a CSGO team or a football team full of star players, especially when it comes to the size of players' ego. I truly recommend you the book called Leading by Sir Alex Ferguson and Michael Moritz. During his career, Sir Alex Ferguson worked with a great variety of players of different character. He had to find a common language with each one of them, which is partially what you as a leader need to be able to do as well. I think that every IGL will find this book useful in one way or the other so I'll definitely recommend it alongside the following titles. Tip number two. Record TeamSpeak communication and analyze it. See which calls you've made in particular moments of the match and what was their outcome. How the enemy team reacted to them. How did your players behave? Was the reaction instant or they hesitated? Did they hold positions as asked? Or maybe they took needless risks by picking certain spots. Of course, you can analyze your demo without TeamSpeak communication right after the game when you still remember every detail. But trust me, it's better to go through it on the next day when the emotions are lower, especially after losing an important match. Keep in mind that in general, men are creatures who learn fastest when they see and hear things they have to memorize. This is also a reason why I'm drawing all that stuff to you, to make it easier to remember. Imagine how much less valuable this video would have been if there was nothing but a black screen or some distracting gameplay in the background. Important. During analysis, do not point fingers at players blaming them for particular situations. Nobody likes it and it doesn't help. Just play the round and ask everyone what could have been done better in it. Have a calm conversation and make sure to note the key conclusions from each analysis. Read them out loud to your team before another important match on the same map. This will help them to avoid making the same mistakes in the upcoming match. Tip number three, adjust to your opponent's play style during the match. Whenever a team is losing, most of the IGLs are just calling a different strat every full buy round and their leadership ends at that point. This makes them very predictable and therefore relatively easy to counter because IGL on the opposite team is thinking something like Since we easily stop them on the B, there is a big chance they will actually be afraid to attack it again and on the next full buy round they will push A side. Let's get banana control quickly so we can risk stacking A side with 4 players. After watching some of the matches between tier 2 teams, I can assure everybody that it really works this way. Just download some GoTV demos and see yourself. So, how to switch into next level thinking in this regard? Change the pace and the way of executions instead of changing the bomb site. For example, in your last full buy round you played B site execution tactic on the Inferno. Even though you threw all your flashes, mollies and smokes, you were eventually caught into the crossfire and killed before even entering the bomb site. So in the next full buy round, instead of just going to A, try to push B again but in a different way. 
For example, take banana control with 3 players and once it's done, make one to rotate back to spot middle and hold banana with the remaining 2 players. Meanwhile, the last 2 guys are making some noise in the apartments and second middle, just to keep cities guessing as to which bomb site you will eventually push. Use your nades to force CTs to spend their own smokes and mollies on both bomb sites. After 30 seconds or so, make everyone ready to push B site again. Throw just one smoke to cut off tree area and two pop flashes one by one. Push at the very moment the first flashbang pops to leave CTs with little to none time to react. Second flash should pop at the very moment you are in the water and ready to enter the site. Its job is to force back the CT who's playing from the coffins area. Just swarm the bomb site and kill everyone. Don't overthink it, just fucking do it. Doesn't matter if there is a smoke blocking your way or not. The first pop flash should give you enough time to pass through it before CT spotting from the tree can see anything. Keep in mind that your smoke cutting off this tree area is on its way. Even if at the end of the round you will find yourself in a 2v3 or 3v3 situation, CTs from the A side should not have that much utility left for the retake. This is just a simple example, but it should allow you to understand what I'm talking about. Tip number 4. First, gain map control, then think about strat execution. Let's stick to Inferno. Remind yourself matches where cities played an almost FFA style, pushing banana, middle, second middle all the time, leaving you with no space to breathe and killing your team in 20 seconds since the beginning of a round. Remember how helpless you felt? If you allow cities to impose their aggressive playstyle, you will have a hard time executing your own tactics. So how to fight that and make the opposite team respect you more? How to earn some room to breathe? It's actually easier than you think. All you have to do is to use your own utility to gain some ground instead of trying to save it for later bombsite execution. Realize that you might not live long enough to play your bombsite execution in the first place. Don't be afraid that you will lack a smoke to cut off some key spots. In the situation I described, it is better to use it and gain map control than not have a chance to get a C4 plan at all. There are countless ways of attacking the bomb site, and not always smokes and mollies are the best ones. Quite often, as explained in the previous point, one well-timed flash is enough to get an edge and win a bomb site battle. Once you notice that City started to play a bit more defensively, keep most of your nades and use them later in the round. Tip number five: make a default setup rule. When your team is losing, sometimes it happens that during freeze time, IGL doesn't speak and nobody knows what is the plan for the given round. In-game leader sometimes needs time to think things through. In such cases, instead of going for a chaotic FFA style, just play a default split and try not to die. This will allow you to get control over the map and provide your IGL with more time to come up with a plan on how to win the ongoing round. If you manage to get a kill while taking the map control, do not rush things up and ask your IGL what is the plan. Very often, in that very moment, an idea will shoot into his mind and he'll be back in the game. So remember, make a rule that if an IGL is silent during freeze time, you're just playing default split. These are the tips that I've been using myself in the past and I'm sure they will also help you to grow as an IGL in CSGO. I'm curious if you can think of any other improvement tips that I haven't mentioned here. If so, let me know about them in the comment section and I will make sure to use some of them in another video. Make sure to press the like button and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. As usual, thanks for watching and I see you soon.